welcome back. Today we're going to be doing part three, three, of the bookshelf unhaul. Today we will be tackling the third shelf, which is the one you can kind of start to see right here behind me. This is going to be the dark blue books moving into like purple books. I've already had a little bit of a glance at the shelf and I think that we're actually going to be able to unhaul. I think there's a lot of books on these shelves that I'm going to want to get rid of. So maybe we're going to reduce the TBR by a lot in this video. Fingers crossed. And I'm actually going to start with a couple books that are not part of this shelf. There are actually some books that you probably previously could see down in this bottom corner because they originally didn't fit on the shelves when I was first like organizing them into the rainbow. But now I think I want to go ahead and try to put them in the rainbow. So I'm going to talk about them now because they're going to go above where I'm at. I mean, I've already like gone through these shelves that they're going to go on. Does that make sense? We've got The Interestings by Meg Wallitzer. This is a book that I've owned for quite a few years and I am still really interested in reading. Meg Wallitzer is an author that I'm super interested in. If you saw my summer book haul, you'll know that I actually just recently bought another one of her books. So this is one that is going to be staying on my shelves. I'm going to be adding it to the yellow section. And I think I'm actually going to go ahead and put this one kind of like on a timeline. Like I need to read this before X date because it's been sitting on my shelf unread for so long that um, I need some motivation. So if I don't read this one in the next six months, then I'm going to unhaul it, but hopefully I will get around to it in the next six months. The other book that was down here in this bottom corner is Wild Beauty by Anna Marie McLemore, which is a book that I've already read and I really enjoyed it. Anna Marie McLemore is an author that I definitely want to read more from. I haven't read any of their other books. I don't own any of their other books, but I want to eventually. And I think that they're an author that I could really love considering how much I did enjoy Wild Beauty. So I will be keeping this one. Okay, now moving on to the actual blue shelf. Starting off with An Absolutely Remarkable Thing by Hank Green. This is the first book in the, uh, I don't know, April, May duology I think it's going to be. I don't actually know what the name of the series is. The second book just recently came out and I'm so excited to read it, but I think I'm going to have to reread book one before I jump into book two, so I will be keeping this one on my shelf. Next up is The Luminaries by Eleanor Catton. I spoke about Eleanor Catton's other book, The Rehearsal, in my previous unhaul video and I unhauled that one, but I think this is one that I want to hang on to even though it is a massive book. I've heard such amazing things about it, plus it just has one of the most beautiful Beautiful covers and I'm pretty sure it's historical fiction which I really enjoy so I'm going to be holding on to this one with the caveat that if I don't read it in the next six months that I have to get rid of it because this one has been sitting on my shelf unread for far too long. Next up is Jane Steele by Lindsay Fay. This is one that I'm still very interested in reading. This is one that I don't think I'm going to need any prompting to get to. It's one that I hear just like endless good things about. It's one that every time I look at my shelf my eye just kind of goes directly to it and I always think Am I finally going to read that book? So am I finally going to read this book? Hopefully soon, for sure. One Day by David Nichols. This is one of my all time favorite books and one that I will for sure be keeping. It's one that I haven't read in a while, but I have some really fond memories associated with the first time I read this book. So I will be holding on to it and I'm, like I said, probably due for a reread soon. Next is The Changeling by Victor Laval. This is one that I hear a lot of really great things about on booktube and it's one that I'm still really interested in reading. So I will be keeping this one as well. Strange the Dreamer by Lainey Taylor. I will of course be keeping this book. I kept Muse of Nightmares in my first installment of the unhaul and I want to keep Strange the Dreamer as well. It's one of my favorite duologies like Incompletion. It is one of my favorite duologies so I will be keeping this and it's one that I could see myself rereading a lot over the next you know, however many years. <laughs> Next is The Last True Poets of the Sea by Julia Drake. I actually just recently read this book. I read it for the Reading Rush and I talked about it pretty extensively in my Reading Rush daily vlogs. And I also talked about it in my summer wrap up, which you can go and watch if you wanna hear some more in-depth thoughts about this one. I have a complicated feeling about this book. I did like it, but it also like broke me emotionally, but I will be keeping it on my shelf because I enjoyed it enough that I don't want to unhaul it. Next is The Book of M by Pang Shepard, which is a book that I still am really interested in reading. I got this book originally because someone compared it to Station Eleven, which we know now is my favorite book. So anything that is kind of compared to Station Eleven, I will automatically like want to check out. It's one that I don't think I'm actually going to need any prompting to get to but it has been sitting on my shelf unread for 
a while now. So I'm going to say that if I don't read it in the next year, I probably need to go ahead and unhaul it. But I think that reading it at some point in the next year will be completely doable. Fallen Kingdoms is a book that I have already read and I enjoyed it enough that I actually also bought the sequel to this one. I do want to reread this one and continue on at some point. I spoke about that in my first part of this unhaul series. And so this is one that will be staying on my shelf, but I don't know if it's going to stay there forever because I kind of have a feeling that if I reread it, I won't enjoy it as much. I know that's really bad to say and I probably should just go ahead and unhaul this one and the second book because I feel that way, but I'm still kind of interested. Like there's still something about the series that has me intrigued. So I'm going to hang on to it and hopefully reread it soon. Next is Passenger by Alexandra Bracken. I really enjoy Alexandra Bracken's writing style. I have read the Darkest Minds trilogy by her and I really enjoyed those books. And I have read the entire Passenger duology and I really enjoyed these books as well. They involve time travel, which is always kind of a bit of a sticky like thing to use in books for me just because I'm so particular about time travel in the books that I read. But I did enjoy this duology and so I think I'm gonna go ahead and keep it on my shelf for now. I don't know that I'd ever actually reread it and if I did reread it I'd probably just go for the audiobooks but these books are just far too beautiful for me to just unhaul so I think I'm going to hang on to this one and the sequel for now. It might be a mistake but it's what's happening. Next up is The Enchanted by Renee Denfeld. This is one of my all-time favorite books. I actually originally read this one as an ebook and then I bought it later because I saw it on sale somewhere and I just wanted to own a physical copy of it. It's a book that I think about all the time. It's one that I'm for sure going to be keeping and uh, yeah, if you haven't read this one, I would highly recommend it. Next is The Last Magician by Lisa Maxwell. This is one that I hear such mixed things about. Like some people have read it and absolutely love it and just rave and rave about it. And then some people have read it and say it's like the most boring book they've ever read. And I don't see a lot of middle ground. I don't really ever see this book getting like three stars. It's either, either like four or five stars or one or two stars. And so for that reason, I am intrigued enough that I do want to give this one a go at some point. So this one will be staying on my TBR. Next is In an Absent Dream by Shauna McGuire. Obviously I'll be keeping this. I've already spoken about books one and three in the series and this one is book four. And it's one of my lesser favorites of the series, but I still like just really enjoy the series overall. And so I will be hanging on to this one. All right, I did say that I thought I was going to be unhauling a bunch of books in this video and I have yet to stick anything in the unhaul pile. So we need to get it going. The next book I have here is The Silence of the Girls by Pat Barker. This actually also won the Booker Prize in 2018, I believe. And I read it and I did like it. I didn't love it. And I feel like it did get like a ton of hype. And I don't know that it necessarily lived up to that hype for me. And for that reason, I think I'm actually going to go ahead and unhaul this one. I, I liked it fine, but I don't think I'll ever like want to reread it. And even though the cover is just absolutely stunning, I think there's probably someone out there that would enjoy this book more than me. So I am going to get rid of it. The History of Love by Nicole Krauss is a book that I have for a long time considered a favorite. When I originally read it, it reminded me a lot of Extremely Loud and Incredibly Close. And then I learned that the author, Nicole Krause, and the author of that book, Jonathan Safran Foer, were actually married. And so I could see a lot of similarities between the two works because I'm sure that they were writing them at the same time in close proximity. Unfortunately, they have now divorced, but um, this is one that I think I'm going to keep and I think I want to reread at some point just to see if I still feel the same way about it as I did when I initially read it. But from what I remember, it was a really beautiful story. So. I am excited to eventually reread it. Next up is Salt of the Sea by Ruta Sepetys. This is another one that I will for sure be keeping. It's one of my favorite books. I really love historical fiction as we have established in this video series thus far. And this is probably my favorite book of hers. So I will be hanging on to it. The Narrow Road to the Deep North by Richard Flanagan. Another Man Booker Prize winner. Maybe I should do a video of me just like reading the Man Booker Prize winners. This one is also historical fiction and it's also set, I'm pretty sure, during World War II perhaps and it's one that I'm still super interested in reading but again I think I need to give myself the like time limit of like a year because if I don't read it soon I just need to unhaul it. It's been sitting on my shelf unread for far too long so yeah I think that that is what's gonna happen. I think if I don't read this one in the next 
year-ish, then it's gotta go. My Name is Memory by Anne Brashares. She is obviously the author of the Sisterhood of the Traveling Pants series, which I read when I was in junior high and high school and I really enjoyed. I bought this one because she wrote it, obviously, and I have read it and I liked it. I have for a long time considered it to be a favorite, although I don't remember anything about it. So it's probably one that's due for a reread at some point, but I'm kind of afraid that it won't hold up if I do reread it. So I think uh, I think I'm going to hold on to it and say that maybe I'll reread it at some point in the future, but if not, I can always just hold on to that memory of how much I enjoyed it when I read it the first time. Next up is The Crane Life by Patrick Ness. I bought this book because I went through a phase where I was reading a ton of Patrick Ness books and I wanted to kind of read everything he'd written, and then I kind of like got out of that phase, and this one's been sitting unread on my shelf for several years now at this point. And although it gets a lot of really positive reviews, I don't think that I'm necessarily interested in it anymore, so I think I'm going to go ahead and unhaul this one. If you think that it's worth it for me to read, then let me know because I am interested if if somebody out there says, you know, it's one of the best books ever, but I'm just not, I don't know, I just don't think I'm interested in it anymore, so I think I'm going to go ahead and pass it on. And the last book on the shelf is The Unseen World by Liz Moore, another book that I have read, another book that I absolutely love, and one that I will for sure be keeping. All right, moving on to the second shelf, I have The Names They Gave Us by Emery Lord. This is a book that I will for sure be keeping. I read it last year, finally, after it having sat on my shelf for so long read and I really really loved it so I will be keeping this one and still kicking myself that it took me so long to get to because it turned out to be such an incredible read. Long Bright River by Liz Moore. This is her newest book and one that I'm still very much interested in reading. Obviously I actually just got it earlier this year. It came out in January and so it's one that um, is still pretty high on my like priority TBR and hopefully I will get to it soon. What We Saw by Erin Hartzler is a book that I have gone back and forth on keeping and unhauling a lot of times in the past. I always like stick it in the unhaul pile and then for some reason I kind of change my mind and I always end up keeping it but I still have never like felt compelled to pick it up and so this is one that I think I'm finally going to say goodbye to. It does get really positive reviews and I have heard that it's just amazing but I, I don't know I just even though I've talked myself into keeping it so many times in the past I still have never felt compelled to pick it up so I'm gonna go ahead and pass it on this time. Next up is The Bear and the Nightingale by Catherine Arden. This is one that I read last year and I really really enjoyed. I'm hoping to continue on with the trilogy this winter and so I will be keeping this one. Next is All the Crooked Saints by Maggie Stiefvater. She's obviously the author of The Raven Cycle which is one of my favorite YA series of all time. I bought it because she wrote it obviously and then I saw a lot of really negative reviews for it and I think that's kind of put me off of picking it up. I don't know if it's actually going to be good but I think I'm gonna hang on to it and if I don't read it in like the next six months or so then maybe I'll go ahead and get rid of it but right now I'm still I don't know, I still want to try to give it a try. Next up is Saint Anything by Sarah Dessen. We've talked about Sarah Dessen so much already. This is one that I do not feel the need to hang on to. It's probably one of my least favorite Sarah Dessen books. It had way too much going on and I didn't find a lot of it particularly memorable. Don't remember the main character's name and uh, so yeah, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be passing this one on. Dance of Thieves is the first book in the continuation series that is like a companion to the Remnant Chronicles, which I really, really love. And so I'm still very much interested in reading this book. The only reason I haven't read it yet is because I have been really wanting to reread the Remnant Chronicles and I haven't gotten around to doing that yet. But once I do, I will be continuing on with this second series. So I'm going to be hanging on to this one. A Million Dunes by Emily Henry is a book that I'm still super interested in reading. I read Emily Henry's adult contemporary romance uh, Beach Read earlier this year it kind of like went crazy on booktube and everybody like read and, and loved it. After reading that book I'm even more interested in reading her YA books so I'm going to be holding on to this one. Next up is Reign of Shadows by Sophie Jordan. I bought this book because it was compared to Tangled which is my favorite Disney movie and I have heard some really good things about the duology so even though I've owned it for a while and it is still unread I do want to hang on to it and I think I'm going to try to like read it before I think I'm gonna actually try to read this one before the end of the year and if I don't read it by the end of the year then I'm gonna go ahead and unhaul both of the books because I actually do own the second one as well but I think I could read it before the end of the year and hopefully I'll like it I mean I've heard really good things about it so hopefully it'll be worth it. The next book I have here is The Exiled Queen by Cinda Williams Chima. This is the second book in the Seven Realms series the first book being The Demon King. 
It's the Demon King. I couldn't remember the title of it. This is a YA fantasy series that was super popular in like the early 2000s and I had a lot of really good luck with early 2000s fantasy. Last year I read Graceling and loved it. I read Finnegan of the Rock and I loved it. So I think I'm gonna hang on to this one and the first book and try to read them soon-ish. I hear such positive things about them that I feel like once I do get around to reading them I will enjoy them. So I just need to actually like make the time to read them. So I'm hanging on to this one for now. Next is The Girl Who Fell by S.M. Parker. This is a hard-hitting YA contemporary that I've heard a lot of really good things about and I have actually tried to read it in the past and I just I really didn't vibe with the writing style. I've held on to it because I think the cover is like just really interesting and because I've heard such good things about it I want to give it a go but I think at this point I am kind of moving out of being interested in a lot of YA. The last few YA books that I've read I haven't really loved that much and so I think I'm just gonna go ahead and unhaul this one. Next is The Heart of Betrayal by Mary E. Pearson. This is the second book in the Remnant Chronicles. I'm keeping it obviously I've already talked about it so this one will be staying on my shelf. Sorcerer of Thorns by Margaret Rogerson is my favorite book that I've read so far in 2020. I I love this book a whole lot and so I will be keeping it even though it has this really annoying sticker from Walmart. I wish I could get it off but every time I try to get it off it just rips so I guess I'm gonna have to get creative with that but this one I'm keeping for sure. These Broken Stars by Amy Kaufman and Megan Spooner. This is a pretty popular YA sci-fi series that I read this first book of and I really liked it but I never continued on with the trilogy and I think at this point if I were to continue on I'd probably just listen to the audiobooks because that's how I read this one and so even though I really like the cover and I did really enjoy this book and I've held on to it for this long I think I'm gonna go ahead and unhaul it just because I don't think I'll ever actually physically reread it. Next is The Resolutions by Mia Garcia. This is a book that I bought last year and I was really excited to read it because it's all about like a group of friends making New Year's resolutions and then I tried to read it in December last year and I did not like the writing style at all and so I kind of like DNF'd it sort of like I just like put it back on my shelf thinking I'm gonna give it another try at some point a whole year has gone by almost at this point and I still am not interested in reading it so I think I'm gonna go ahead and unhaul this one as well. Wondersmith The Calling of Morgan Crow by Jessica Townsend. This is the second book in the Nevermore series which I really love. I read Nevermore last year the year before at this point and I really loved it and the third book in this series is actually getting ready to come out. I'm still like super excited about this series. I actually did start Wondersmith and I got a pretty good way into it and then I kind of got into a reading slump I think and so I haven't finished it but I'm still planning on finishing it so this one is staying on my TBR. Next is Space Opera by Catherine M. Valente. This is a space opera book. I think it's kind of a satire and I'm pretty sure it's all about these alien races that do their own form of like Eurovision but it's like world vision and or like universe vision or something like that and I think that the losers end up like their planets get destroyed and I'm pretty sure like for the first time Earth is competing in it as well. I may be completely wrong about all of that but this is a book that I hear such good things about all the time so I am going to be hanging on to this one. This Lullaby by Sarah Dessen is my favorite Sarah Dessen book. This this is one of the ones that I for sure cannot get rid of just because of how important and special it is to me. I know that if I read it now I probably wouldn't like it near as much but like early high school Lindsay loved this book so much that I can never get rid of it. And the last book on the shelf before we move on to like full-on purple books is That Inevitable Victorian Thing by E.K. Johnston which is a book that I actually tried to read in a or I, I started in a try a chapter tag and I was like interested in it but this one has really low ratings on Goodreads. It has really poor reviews and I'm not sure if I'm interested in it anymore. I think I'm gonna tentatively put this one on the unhaul pile and I would really love some feedback on this one if you read it and you really enjoyed it. I'd really like to know but for the time being I think I'm ready to let this one go. Okay we just have one more shelf for this video and we are starting off with another Sarah Dessen book. This is Once and For All and this is also one of my lesser favorites. This is one of her newer ones and I just wasn't super impressed or haven't been super impressed with a lot of her newer releases aside from her newest one, The Rest of the Story, which I read last year I guess and liked. The only thing I really like about this book is the cover. I really love this bouquet of flowers. It's so pretty but I didn't like this book at all really so I am going to be unhauling it. I thought I had already unhauled this but this is Their Fractured Light by Amy Kaufman and Megan Spooner. This is actually the third book in the Starbound trilogy. I never 
got around to buying the second one and as I've already said if I do decide to continue on with the series I will probably just listen to the audiobooks so I'm going to be unhauling this one as well. Oh look the next book is another Sarah Dessen book. This is Lock and Key and this is one that I am going to be keeping. If you haven't noticed I really like her older stuff. It's what I um, read when I was in high school. Obviously it's what I have the most like nostalgic attachment to so this is one that I will be keeping on my shelf. Next is Not That I Could Tell by Jessica Strasser. This is a book of the month book obviously and it's also a mystery thriller which I have never heard anybody talk about. I'm also not really interested in it anymore so I am going to be unhauling this one. The Rogue Not Taken by Sarah McLean. This is a historical romance novel that I'm still very much interested in reading so I'm going to be hanging on to it. Next is Rise of Fire by Sophie Jordan. This is the second and final book in the Reign of Shadows duology as I've already said giving myself until the end of the year to read these books and then I'll probably be unhauling them but hanging on to it for now. Starry Eyes by Jen Bennett is a YA contemporary that a lot of people really enjoy. Jen Bennett in general is an author that people really seem to enjoy so I'm going to be holding on to this. I have heard mostly positive things about it but I have seen some mixed reviews for it as well so I'm a little bit nervous but I'm gonna be hanging on to it for now and hopefully I will like it. Next up is Erotic Stories for Punjabi Widows which I bought on the re recommendation of a friend and also it just has like an amazing title. I am still really interested in reading this but I do think I need to kind of give myself a timeline like a, a limit on this one because it's been sitting on my shelf for so long unread. I won't prioritize it if I'm not forced to prioritize it so if I don't read this one in the next six months then I have to let it go but I think that that will be plenty of motivation to try to get me to read it. Next is Wayfarer by Alexandra Bracken. I already spoke about Passenger. Obviously this is the second book and one I will also be keeping. Next is Strange Grace by Tessa Gratton which is a book that so many people have read and enjoyed and like raved about and recommended. Specifically Jane from It's Jane Lindsay. This is one of her favorite books I know and she and I have pretty similar reading tastes so I'm going to be holding on to this one and hopefully reading it next month. I think it's going to be a really good October read so I'm going to try to read it in October. We'll see. The Obelisk Gate by N.K. Jemisin. This is the sequel to The Fifth Season. I love the fifth season and I'm still very much interested in this trilogy so I will be holding on to the second book. We've got An Unrestored Woman by Shoba Rao. This is a collection of short stories that I'm still really interested in. Shoba Rao is an author that I think I will love once I read her books so hopefully I will do that and I will love this. I spoke about in my previous unhaul video how I'm not always like in the mood for short stories but I have a few collections on my shelves for when I am in the mood and I know that eventually I will be in the mood for this so I'm going to hang on to it. Next up is Red Clocks by Lenny Zumas. This is a book that I have read and I liked it okay. I didn't really like love it as much as a lot of other people seem to but I think it's one that I could benefit from rereading and so I'm going to hang on to it and hopefully reread it at some point and maybe I'll get more out of it the second time around. Next is No Country for Old Men by Cormac McCarthy. This is a modern classic that I remember buying because of somebody. It was specifically because somebody recommended it and I still haven't read it but I still think I want to. I know there's also a movie based on this book that got a lot of like critical acclaim so I'm gonna hang on to this one with the you know intention of reading it in the next like six months to a year because I have had it unread on my shelf for so long that I need to like make myself read it but I still want to. So I'm going to try to do that. Next up is A Little Life by Hanya Yanagihara. This is a book that I'm still very much interested in reading. I actually just recently got the audiobook of this one because I think I want to try to listen to it because I did actually read it, started it, and I got a little ways in and it was just a lot. So I think I would like be easier to consume if I listen to the audiobook but I'm gonna be holding on to this one because I think I will really enjoy it. Conan Verity by Elizabeth Wine, one of my absolute all-time favorite books ever. Definitely will never be able to unhaul this because this book is amazing and I love it so much and I will keep it forever. The Tiger's Daughter by K. Arsenal Rivera is an adult fantasy book that I remember got really popular a few years ago and I saw a bunch of people reading and talking about it. I'm not super interested in it anymore. I don't really know. I've never like felt compelled to pick it up and I know for a fact that my library has this book so if I ever do kind of like decide I want to read it then I can just get it from the library but I don't want to hold on to it anymore so I will be unhauling this one. And finally the last book I have here for this video is The Flat Share by Beth O'Leary. This is an adult contemporary romance that I read earlier this year. 
maybe last year. I don't know. Time does not make sense to me anymore. I think I read it earlier this year and I liked it fine. I don't think it's anything super special and I don't think it's like as great as a lot of people <laughs> say it is, but it was all right. And I, uh, I think I'll hold on to it for now. I don't know that I'll ever reread it, but it's one that I could see myself lending out, especially maybe to my mom. I think she'd really enjoy this. So I'm going to keep it on my shelf for now. All right. So we've made it through part three now. And in this part, we talked about 60 different books. Of those 60 books, I have read and decided to keep 23 of them. I have read and decided to unhaul four of them. There are 16 books that are staying on my TBR but are not necessarily priorities. As I've said before, these are books that I think I will really enjoy and I don't think I'm going to need any motivation to actually get to. But as always, I'd really love to hear your thoughts, opinions, feelings on any of these books. If there's one on here that I've held up that I think I'm gonna like but you think I won't like, I'd really love to know. There are nine books that I am deciding to keep but if I don't read them in a certain amount of time I will be unhauling them and I would really love to know your thoughts and feelings about these as well because there are some books here that while I still feel excitement to read I'm not necessarily as excited to read so if you see one here that you think I absolutely will not like please let me know. And there are eight books that I've decided to permanently remove from my TBR. Although if you see a book here that is one of your absolute favorites and you make a compelling enough argument, then I could always change my mind. So let me know down in the comments. So that is part three of the unhaul. We are steadily making our way through my entire book collection. We're almost at the halfway point, I'd say, and I feel good about what I have decided to keep and what I've decided to get rid of so far. I have decreased my TBR by 18 at this point, which is not you know, necessarily the best because I was hoping to get rid of a lot more books. But as I said in my previous video, a little progress is better than no progress. Other than that, thank you so much for watching. Thank you for sticking with this video series thus far. We still have a few episodes to go, so I hope you're really enjoying it. I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you again very soon.